Welcome to another episode of Crash and the Boards. I'm Joe Sudbeck. I'm Jack Kroenke. And with everything going on with the Last Dance, we're not gonna really we're gonna touch on Michael as a whole, but we're not gonna focus on that. But with everything going on with the Last Dance and Michael Jordan and everything that he went through and all of his teammates, I think it's a perfect time to really kind of reignite the debate of LeBron versus MJ. You know who's the best of all time, and I think we both had a consensus that it's by far, hand down, Michael Jordan at this moment. Definitely, for sure. I think that and LeBron no, no, no. has a chance, obviously, but he just doesn't have enough rings right now. Exactly. You, you can't argue six for six in NBA championships and not be considered the greatest of all time. Not to mention all-team defense, numerous occasions, multiple MVPs. I mean, like, you can't argue with that. The one I just saw, I just saw somebody it was online say that they had like the winning percentages in finals because obviously you lose in finals all the time I mean most of Michaels were no he didn't I don't think he ever went to a game he never went to a game seven I know that but I don't know if he ever swept anybody yeah. I don't think he did so I think he always won no. like five or six games every time so it's always it's five or six he went four one in the against the Lakers four two against the Trailblazers Suns Sonics and Jazz twice see and I think you look at that. I saw. I saw the winning percentages in the finals. Like, he was like Michael was twenty four and eleven. It was like sixty eight percent. That's what his winning percentage was in the finals. And then they had him compared to like Kobe, and Steph Curry and LeBron. I'm gonna pull it up right here. I'm gonna find it because it was really intriguing to see the differences between those two as a whole. Here it is right here, Michael. 24 and 11, a 68.5 percent winning percentage in the finals. Kobe is second between the four with 23 and 13, 64 percent. Steph Curry, 17 and 11, and that is for 61 percent. And LeBron, by far the worst winning percentage of the four, with 18 wins to 31 losses and a 36.7 percent winning percentage in the finals. Mm-hmm. And the yep. reason, you look at that, his winning percentage is so bad compared to the other two because look at how bad the East was with LeBron there. Yeah, I mean, I think when LeBron was with the Cavs was the last time he went to the championship. Yeah. Who's the best team in the East? The best team in the East was probably... It was the Raptors. The Celtics. Yeah, the Celtics Raptors, and the Raptors. Celtics. Celtics weren't even that good. I mean, I mean, the last time the Cavs were a four seed, they weren't by they weren't a dominant team as last year in Cleveland. They just had a LeBron that was on a mission to get back to the finals, and he did. And you know they lost. They beat the number one seed Raptors, and I think the in the second round, I think they beat the Celtics, who were a two seed. I think they might have they beat the Celtics. I don't know if they're a two or a three. But Celtics were a three seed. I think, I think that year Raptors were one. I think the 76ers were two. Yeah, I think so. And the Celtics uh, were three. Celtics were three. Cavs were four. So I think four that five. they were that that year. The East was okay. You know, you look when he was in Miami. The Pacers were like the team they played in the conference finals. They weren't great. The Raptors no. in the early years of Cleveland, they were not great. And then he compared it to Michael had to get through in the East. And that, had to get through. Even pre, like, like in the 90s and not 80s. Like, the 80s, you could, that, that was ridiculously tough. But even when they were the best team in the East, like LeBron most of the time was, they had to get through the Pacers with Reggie Miller. Um, the Magic with Shaq yeah, the later. The Celtics with Larry Bird. Exactly. You have um, the Knicks with Patrick Ewing. There's so many teams in there – that were good to great teams that would give Michael a run, where like LeBron's best competition, the hardest competition he had faced was the Celtics with the big three, and that was only for like four, three years, and then they just got too old and they really couldn't do anything. You know, the Hawks, yeah. when they had like four all-stars, but it was like they were more of a team. They didn't really have a star, which hurts when you're playing against three of them. When they when they had you know in Cleveland or in Miami, so I think that hurts LeBron's case. So if you're gonna rank the top three players in order, 
who do you have? Top three players for what? In basketball, just top three players. Right now? Of all time. Sorry, of all time. Of all time, top three. Um, Number one, you have to go Michael, MJ. Six for six, championships, can't argue. And multiple MVPs, multiple defensive player of the years. I mean, you can't argue with that. Number two, I'd have to go with Kareem, all-time scorer. All-time leading scorer, played for, like, probably, I don't even know, like, for years some seasons. That's an exaggeration, but, like, yeah. he played forever. Ridiculous amount of seasons. And was good in all of them. Ridiculous amount of seasons. Good in all of them. Won championships, multiple championships. And then number three, I would have to go with LeBron. I mean, greatest, arguably greatest player of all time. I don't think so, but he's arguably up there. He's top ten in assists, top ten in points, top ten in, I don't even, like, he's just a great great player all around. Yeah, I... I agree with that top three hundred percent. That's definitely the order. Um, I think the the biggest thing also up for debate is if you compare, if you're gonna pick a starting five, we're gonna pick the starting five of the best competition LeBron's had in the finals versus Michael. And like, who would you think win? I mean, I have for Michael, you have John Stockton, you know, second best point guard in my opinion. You have first best. Let's, let's be real here for first best. Magic is the best. At, no, point, at point guard? Is the no, at that's... Point guard. John Stockton's all-time number two. Assists, all-time leader in steals. And I, I like John Stockton, but he's number two. Magic, he didn't win a championship. Magic won five. And you can't say that... Magic had better players than Oh, but he, Carl Malone's a Hall of Famer, too. And okay, so... so is so is James Worthy. That's what I mean. I'm saying that they, they both had good players around them, and they just didn't get it done. You know, except one got done, one didn't. So I think that you have John Stockton at yeah, point you guard. Point. You made your point, though, because MJ is going up against the Jazz, two Hall of Famers. He's going against, up against the Lakers, three Hall of Famers. He's going up against the Celtics in the East, who has two Hall, who had two Hall of Famers with Kevin McHale well, and Larry Bird. More than that, Robert, Robert Parrish. Parrish pretty good too. Yeah, I mean, he was a Hall of Famer. The you know the bad boys have at least one I, or two. Isaiah Thomas. Two. And I I don't know about Joe Dumars, but Dennis Rodman, and Isaiah Thomas. Um, you mm-hmm. have Clyde Drexler from the Trailblazers. Yeah, Trailblazers. You have Gary Payton, Sean Kemp for the Sonics. Yeah, I don't know if Sean Super Kemp. Sonics. I don't know. Yep. If Sean Kemp's the Hall of Famer, but he's still it was an All Star at the time, you know. Mm-hmm. And then you have Charles Barkley with the Suns. And that Suns team was just all around really good. Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley, a lot of those guys. So I think that, you know, LeBron, they're, he's going to have a lot of Hall of Famers when, it, when it's all said and done. I mean, Steph Curry, top, arguably top three point guard of all time. Um, yeah. I, there's so many. They both have a lot of good, t- like, players. But, I mean, just looking at it, and it's the teams that, he, like, LeBron lost to, I mean, Dirk and the Mavs were a great team, but the star power, if you're going like to compare that, the superstars that the Heat had, they should have easily won that series against the Ma- Mavericks and easily had a three-peat just yeah, off that. I mean, sure. D-Wade, Bosh, LeBron, you know. and Versus you know, Dirk and... Jason I Kidd. Know. I mean, Jason Kidd, older at the time, way past his prime, you know, was a solid player, but he wasn't, and not anywhere near he was in the past. Jason Terry was the second best player on that team, and he came yeah. off the bench and just lit him up, which to me still does not make sense. I mean, Dirk played out of his mind. So, I mean, I, I see how they lost, but I just, it, it amazes me that they still did. So, I mean, Magic had, a, or Michael had played for, I guess, way better players than LeBron had, but they still, you know, won their fair share of rings, but, you know, LeBron made all those finals in a week, you know, weak Eastern Conference compared to the way it was with MJ. So now I think this is where we get into the argument of they just came out. They had the all-decade team, you know, before the season started, they came out with that. And, you know, they have like a first, second, third team. So who do you have on your first team all-time players? Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power Uh forward, center. Okay, first point guard, you have to give you have to get an elite passer, great ball handler, can run the offense, John Stockton. All time leader in assists, all time leader in steals, shot the three pretty well. I mean, 
I don't think there's another option. Magic, I don't think he's up there because he can't. I don't think he's proven himself as good enough to shoot. I think he just could play defense and pass the ball. So that's why I've stocked it up there is just because he can shoot it better than Magic. So um, shooting guard, MJ, six for six, could score whenever he wanted. Uh, number three, small forward. Um, I don't know. I'll come back to that one. But my power forward is for sure Tim Duncan. Big fundamental, one champ, two championships, rookie of the year, defensive player of the years, numerous times. Yeah, I mean, I mean, five time champion, ridiculous. Yeah, and then my center. Um, I'd have to go with Shaq because there's not even there's no other player in NBA history who's as dominant of a force as Shaq is, as Shaq in his prime was. Because what, like what, 289, 7'3", 289 could jump over anybody. Oh, yeah, I mean, agile, for for how big he was to be that agile was amazing. Then for going back to small forward, I'd have to put Larry Bird. Could stretch the floor, could play a little bit of defense, great playmaker, and just had that winning DNA in Boston for... In uh, 86, 85, 86. That is... I, that would be my all-time. That's interesting because, you know, you have LeBron and Kareem in your top three all-time. And you have yes. Shaq and Larry in your, bat, in your all-time first team. I have Magic at point guard. He won five championships. Could pat, he was the all-time leader in, in assist when he retired. And unfortunately, had to retire early due to AIDS. So, I mean, if he didn't have to retire early, he might still be the all-time leader in assists. You never know. I mean, obviously, John Stockton was really good. But at the time, Magic was, you know, had the most assists all time. So, I think you have to look at that. And it doesn't take away from anything John Stockton did. But it just Magic won more. Won more and he could also pass the ball, too. And I have Matt Michael at the two. Can't disagree there. Definitely have LeBron at the three. He, to me, he's past Larry. He has, I think he has more MVPs. Definitely has, he has the same amount of championships as Larry. Both have three. The MVPs definitely have to be similar. Maybe LeBron has one more. Um, LeBron's top time and top ten points. He's consistent all throughout his career. I mean, he's he's getting up there. I don't know how many seasons he's played, but it's been a lot. And he is consistently a twenty point per game scorer. At least for now. You never know in a couple years what that's like. But for now he is. He can do everything. Rebound, pass. Just like Larry could. But do it at a higher level. At the four, can't disagree. Tim Duncan, five-time champion. Just solid all the way around. Never really fell off. Completely always could do what he needed to do. On both ends of the floor. And then at the five, Kareem. I mean, Shaq's good. But, I mean, Kareem, all-time leader in points. Six-time champion. Um, five or six time champion, and he he can just do he play both ends of the floor. Now the yeah. second team, I'm gonna give you. I have two of those players. I have John Stockton. I have Kobe. I have Larry Bird. I have Carl Malone, and I have I have Shaq. I have those are my five, and I think I mean I, I John Stockton and Larry Bird are to me are the, they're the they are the be- the second best small forward and point guard. And same with Kobe, those three, those are non negotiable. Those three definitely are up there. I just don't agree with that. Larry Bird and John Stockton should be the first team players. Yeah. I'm gonna switch I'm gonna go magic. I'm gonna switch your ones or your point guard and small forward for mine, second team. Magic and Magic and LeBron. Point guard and small forward. Kobe, I think, is also second all time at shooting guard. Uh, center, I'd have to go with Kareem. All time leader points, as you said. Power forward, that's tough. Hmm, maybe, yeah, maybe Carl Malone, the mailman. Just physical specimen. Second huge. leader in points. Yeah, I mean, he also really consistent. I mean, him and John Stockton, man, 
they can play. Maybe the most consistent duo like ever. Just I mean, I think they they're probably the two of the most consistent players ever. I mean, they never really fell off when they got older. I mean, they did, but it was a gradual. I mean, you look at the stats of Carl Malone. He went from averaging like 20 a game in his second to last season in Utah to then going to the Lakers. And the reason why he didn't score as much is because he was hurt and he's playing with Kobe, Gary Payton, and Shaq. So, I mean, that was – he was really consistent all throughout his career. And I think you look at all this, you see with the last dance what Michael was like as a player and just what it took to be that good. And for people like us, we, never, we weren't alive at the time. So we never really got to see what Michael's dominance was and how really – Good he that how good he actually was, or that we're in the midst of the LeBron dominance and seeing how good he is and witnessing an all time great. So this yeah. I think it's great to have things where you can look back at the past things you maybe you maybe you haven't seen you weren't alive for to see what I mean you know see the best player at work when you never really got to see it. I mean you got, you got to see a maybe the best player at work right now with LeBron, but I just think he's not there yet. And I think both yeah. disagree with that. So I would encourage, with obviously not a lot on, especially in sports, but just not a lot on in general on TV, to on Sunday nights look and watch the last dance. There's only I think there's three weeks of it left. Or probably maybe the time this goes out, probably two weeks of it left, and it'll be episode seven and eight, and then nine and ten. Yes. So it'll be. It'll be interesting to see how it finishes, but I think that it you look at who they had to play, the great players they played, the MVPs they played at the time, Hall of Famers compared to LeBron. Obviously, it's two separate eras. I mean, you can't you put Steph Curry back then, what would he have done? You put John Stockton now, put Carl Malone now, what would they have done? You just don't know. But if you compare each other. I think we we know that Michael's era was just a lot harder, especially in the East, than right now. And I think that LeBron, some of LeBron's success has been because of a weak Eastern Conference. But it doesn't take away from how great of a player he is. I think it's just a wrinkle in there that you have to look at when you look at how bad the Eastern Conference has been when he's been in the East, which isn't his fault at, by any means. Yeah. So, yeah. do, you, do, you think, do you have anything else to add? No, I think you pretty much covered it all. So, this has been the conclusion of another episode of Crashing the Boards, and I'm Joe Sudbeck. I'm Jack Bernicke. Thanks for watching. <laughs>